Hey, what's up, my fellow YouTubers? So, I wanted to make a little video today. Uh, I did some videos recently, uh, actually my two last videos. One was road disc bikes under a thousand, and then I did a road disc bike under two thousand. Um, just quickly, why I chose disc, and why didn't I just say best road bike under a thousand and best road bike under two thousand well for for me it's actually the same it, it's gonna be a disc brake road bike it's gonna be my new requirement uh, I'm actually building myself right now a road bike uh, that's disc brake specific um, so you may ask like why you know uh, cantilever brakes or V brakes or you know rim brakes let's just call it rim brakes so rim brakes have been around for God, I don't know, 50, 60, 70, 80, I don't know, a lot of years, right? Um, and they've worked fine and so on. The reason why is the evolution of uh, materials, and it's specifically carbon. So if you are buying a bike and you will never upgrade to carbon road wheels, then, and, and they're aluminum wheels that you're buying because... You know, if you're looking at the price range of one to two thousand dollars, it's not going to come with carbon wheels. Um, not in my experience, anyways, uh, and not that we could see and find anything. So, so to answer your question or, or answer a question is, if you're never ever going to upgrade the wheel set, then and there are aluminum wheels in that price range, you can buy anything you want that you want to. Um, you can buy. Um, non-disc, you can buy disc and so on. Um, for me, my particular writing um, and what I want to do and what I would do with my own money, you know, if I'm buying a road bike, I would buy a road bike that I could afford knowing that I'm going to spend an extra X amount of dollars on carbon wheels. Um, and I want to I want to make this video a little bit more of carbon versus aluminum. So I'll, I'll I'll just swiftly go along and say that if you have carbon wheels and you have rim brakes on them um, and they're clinchers, so tubulars have a little bit more durability. Um, but if they are they are clinchers, then there is a chance of overheating on downhills, and that chance of overheating is going to, going to um, make them uh, deform, basically. Uh, it's going to ruin your wheel, the carbon wheel. And carbon wheels aren't cheap. And it's just not a design that, that proves safe. So um, I've, I've, I'm, I'm getting rid of my carbon wheels that I have currently. Uh, not that I had a failure. I personally have not had a failure. Uh, but I don't want to ride something that I feel might fail in that sense that is scientifically or however you want to say it that's proven that you know if you continue riding on a, on on steep downhills and you heat up the brake surface a lot which happens um you know especially the heavier the rider you are the more you heat up the brake surface so anyway so i want to i want to get past that real quick and and answer a real simple question that i had ans uh, asked me and that was in my two videos that I did, best road bike under a thousand, best road bike under two thousand. If you're going between two or three bikes and the and the question is, should I go for aluminum frame and Shimano Ultegra or should I go with we're talking about the same price point here, carbon frame and Shimano 105. So 105 is cheaper than Ultegra. They're both eleven speed nowadays. Uh, aluminum is cheaper than carbon, okay? So is is either carbon 105 or aluminum Ultegra. What should you go for? Well, it's an interesting idea or concept, uh, and I'll and I'll give you my answer, and then I give you what what I would do. If you're gonna ride less competitive road rides then I would uh, go with aluminum 
less competitive means you're just enjoying the road and you want to you want a uh, bike that works and it will continue working and so on um so my contingency would be on that is buy the aluminum if it's a good deal and you like the bike with Ultegra and only if 28 mil tires fit in the frame and fork all right that's my my contingency right there if you can't get 28s in the frame and fork more importantly the frame but frame and fork either way then I would go with carbon I know you guys are thinking like what 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 is your thought well, why what what's the point so carbon absorbs vibration um, it really does a lot better than aluminum aluminum is a very stiff uh, material uh, I, I, I started racing with steel frames so they're very heavy steel frames and uh, that went to carmoli right and, and so on but they're steel it's a different type of steel but they're steel so steel frames are very given giving sorry and um, it was a very comfortable ride and then when aluminum came and they were saying oh it's so much stiffer so much more energy down to your pedals we're still talking all rigid stuff here this is back in like early 90s right so um and then we went to aluminum bikes and and i gotta tell you most people that actually were out there riding they hated it it was too harsh it was too stiff as soon as we went to aluminum frames on mountain bikes specifically on mountain bikes the tire size grew by a lot we used to ride aluminum car uh, steel frames hardtails and we would have like 2.0 tires, 1.9 tires. And then we switched to aluminum in our racing team. And we were like, oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, 2.1, 2.2 tires started, started to be the, the, the thing to do then. Um, and it was to kind of soften the, the ride, absorb a little bit more of that chatter. Um, so long story short, if you're going for a road bike, there's going to be a lot of chatter. If you have 28 mil tires, a lot of that chatter is going to be kind of smoothed out. Uh, I tried it with my bike that I currently have, and I felt a significant difference going from 23s to 28s. I know there's a big jump. I could have gone 25s, uh, and I actually did go 25 in the back and 28 in the front. It's what, what my giant TCR fits. doesn't fit the 28, unfortunately. So it did smooth it out a lot. Um, now, if it was me, me personally, I like to go out riding. I like the feel of carbon. I like the lightness of carbon. Um, and I do like to get competitive every now and then. What I mean competitive is I don't race really anymore, but I st I'll still do some competitive group rides. Um, so, me personally, it's easier to upgrade a crank set and a derailleur and some shifters when they go bad or when when there's a good deal or something like that so i want the chassis to be the highest quality possible for the money when i'm buying something so if i have fifteen hundred dollars or eighteen hundred dollars or whatever the budget might be and there's a an option or a choice for me to get a bike that's full carbon but might have 105 compared to an aluminum bike with ultegra well where am i going to go from ultegra I'm not going to upgrade Ultegra. I'm not going to go Durace. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not sponsored anymore, so I'm not going to go Durace. Um, so, what's the real difference between 105 and Ultegra? Well, there really isn't that much. I mean, we're talking a couple of grams here and there. It's 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 not functionality. It's not really. I mean, some people might be like, "Oh, this brakes so much better, and there's so much crisp when you're shift." And I mean, it's it's small, small, tiny refinements. Nobody won or lost a race because they had 105 versus Ultegra. No one, ever, in the history of cycling. So, forget that. Now, did someone win a race based on the frame material, aluminum versus carbon? Well, that's a little bit more arguable. Because it might not make you faster, but it might make you feel fresher after a 90-mile ride or a 60 mile ride or whatever, however long it is, depending on the road surface and the tires that you choose, it might make you feel fresher because you're not vibrating as much. So see, if you're not vibrating as much, uh, you might have more energy at the end. So it's interesting when, you s when people say, well, nobody really won this because of that. Well, 
it, it all depends. Now, gearing wise, I would go with 105. It's it's a great system. It's it's a great gear to choose. It's a great price point. It is it is the most valuable gear set I think right now in the market is the Shimano 105. Is the best bang for buck uh, gearing system that you can choose uh, for road bikes. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Um, the the price that you can get it nowadays, the Shimano 105, and it's 11 speed and it's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, the same the same way that I feel that Shimano SLX is bang for buck the best um, that no, you know what for mountain bikes ah, SRAM has some some really good stuff so I'm not I'm not ready to say that for for mountain bike I would have to do a little bit more research and 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 ride it so going back to road bikes what what would I choose I would choose the carbon frame bike with Shimano 105 and then for me it has to be a disc brake bike and for me, when I buy something, I know that I'm going to upgrade the wheels. I, I know I'm going to have a lighter set of wheels. I'm going to have a, a cheaper, cheaper, cheaper uh, set of wheels, cheaper set of wheels for training and, and, and riding or something. And, uh, and, and, and some nice carbon wheels when I want to feel a little bit more snippy, when I want to feel a bit more aerodynamic, when I want to want, want more speed. Um, so that's just me. Maybe maybe I'm old-fashioned in that, in that way. I don't have one wheel set that does it all. Um, that being said, on my mountain bike, I just decided to put my nice wheels on and just leave it on because <laughs> they rode so much nicer. They were so much lighter and they rode so much nicer. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take my nice wheel set and, and, and just ride that all along. Now, did I sell my old cheaper wheel set? No, because I, I know things break. So if I break something, I have a backup. I don't have to wait for something. I don't have to buy something um, to to uh, to to replace it right away in panic. I can take my time and find a deal and and find the right spot, uh, find the right stuff. So to answer uh, the uh, question again, uh, I'm repeating myself, but real quickly, I would go with carbon versus aluminum. I would go with 105 versus Ultegra if I don't have the budget. If I had the budget, well, I it's arguable here because if I had the budget, I would go carbon Ultegra. Um, if I ha even if I had unlimited budget, which is kind of weird to say because, you know, how rich do you have to be to have unlimited budget? But even if I had an unlimited budget, the reasonable thing to do would in that case, even if you go above $2,000, I think the reasonable thing would be still is a carbon carbon bike with Ultegra and then with some really nice wheels. Uh, and you can spend spend some money on wheels. Um, I don't see the point of an amateur rider riding Durace. I mean, uh, bike companies are going to be like, well, what are you saying? Because Durace is so... Really? I mean, if you, you know, if you really want to go, okay, well, I want DI2, then... Do Ultegra DI2. You don't have to do Dura Ace to a DI2. Uh, there's some nice stuff there, though. FSA is coming out with stuff, and, and SRAM, I know, has got some stuff, and I don't have that much experience with, with other stuff than, sh than Shimano. I can tell you this. Shimano is built to last. I've seen other stuff, and they might be good. They might work well, but I don't think the durability is quite there compared to Shimano. Shimano stuff is meant to last. Um, I used to be anti-Shimano years ago. I used to be all SRAM, 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 you know, but uh, Shimano is just... I'm, I'm sorry, but I have old Shimano stuff that still is ticking. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I think it's pretty interesting, the concept of, you know, when you have this many options nowadays, what would you do and what would I do with my money? And I try to give that advice. Please comment. Let me know what you guys think. If you think I'm wrong, how you, or maybe I have, I'm not thinking of something and maybe I should, we should talk about something else. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you like this video and you'd like to see more like this, and, and I some, this one was pretty boring actually because there's nothing really going on except for me talking. But um, 
uh, subscribe. I do I do videos every now and then, and, and I'll comment when the big races come. You know, the Giro, not necessarily Giro Italia, but uh, well, actually, why not? But when when you know Tour de France uh, starts, I'll be doing videos probably every single day um, for for uh, catch up on this, uh, catch up and and my my two cents of what's going on. But thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys have a nice ride.